Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology. In this session on economic geography, today we are going to learn about primary activities in economy. So we are going to look into the structure of these primary activities, look into some case studies related to agriculture, its various types across the world, also mining, forestry, fishing and several others. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about these primary activities in the economy. So as we know that human activities generate income, they generate livelihood for us. Right. And that's why they are called economic activities. Now, this economic activities are broadly grouped into primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary activities. Now, important is to learn about all of them in this flow diagram here. So primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. If you observe here, primary is basically natural resource based. Secondary is manufacturing based, tertiary involves service industries and quaternary involves the intellectual activities. So example if you want to know agriculture, mining, fishing, oil, gas, forestry, all these things which are mostly draining out the natural resources which is basically primary activities which we are going to learn in details in this session and industry which is basically construction, chemical, steel, pharmaceuticals and several others these are secondary activities. Then comes the service industry and now as we know during the lockdown during the pandemic the service industry is what we were all dependent upon for the doorstep delivery and several other services right. So we know that it is based on IT information technology retailing and wholesaling financial services mass media telecommunications tourism entertainment real estate several services that we get right from entertainment to the food industry from the apparels to other you know several other different kinds of industries remember it's all tertiary then comes quaternary activities for example healthcare education culture sport scientific research social services police military law public roads and transit all these things are part of quaternary activities now the entire economy is built on the four pillars out of which we are going to learn about the first pillar that is the primary activity. Now, when we say primary activities, this flow diagram is one thing which you can remember easily. So primary sector is based on mining, agriculture, fishing, forestry, mineral extraction. All these things are the major pivots of primary sector of economy. And it is directly importantly understood as the utilization of earths or natural resources. Right. So primary activity, whenever you hear the word should be natural resources coming to your mind. So land, water, vegetation, building materials and minerals occupy the major attributes of primary activities in our economy. Hunting and gathering, pastoral activity, fishing, forestry, agriculture, mining and querying. These things have been part of the primary sector of economy since its inception. Right. So now let's begin with the first one that is hunting and gathering and then gradually go to the mining, fishing, agriculture culture and its subtypes. Animals which were hunted and the plants which were edible they were gathered from the forests and vicinity under hunting and gathering. That was the most primitive form of economic activity that we say. So gathering and hunting is the oldest economic activity as we know and normally in different conditions in forested areas in harsh climatic conditions these were practiced. Gathering is still practiced in many societies. So gathering is practiced where if you observe this is the world map and you can pause the video and also look into the world map or you can get a world map and mark these areas in different continents where you still have these areas which is dark areas on the map where you see hunting and gathering still prevalent. So majorly gathering if you observe northern Canada, northern Eurasia, southern Chile. This is where you observe all the locations on the map. Amazon basin, tropical Africa, northern fringe of Australia and interior parts of Southeast Asia. This is the world distribution of hunting and gathering in present times. Then in modern times remember gathering has occupied a commercial base as well. How? Remember we are collecting leaves, bark of trees and medicinal plants for so many commercial purposes in the market. Right. So now this gathering has become market oriented as well. For example, the bark used for quinine. Remember, this is a 
cure for malaria tannin extract and cork leaf supply materials for beverages drugs cosmetics fibers thatch fabrics nuts for food and oil and then tree trunk yield rubber blata gums and resins so we all know that this is prevalent across the world these gathering activities are used for commercial purposes for so many examples as we see here right so one of the example in almost your everyday life if you are fond of eating chiclets right or the chewing gums it is made from the milky juice of zapota tree or we say sapota or chiku right so this is one of the examples you can quote here the chicle or chiclets that you can right so pastoralism is the second one after hunting and gathering where you see hunting was considered as unsustainable right so then came the situation where petting the animals became important pastoralism came after that so people living in different climatic conditions selected those animals which could be domesticated so the function here is domestication of animals so under which you have several types of pastoralism one of them is nomadic herding and it is based on what it is based on geographical factors technological development animal rearing today is practiced in several areas from subsistence to commercial levels so first of all let's look into nomadic herding the word itself is nomadic so what is there nomadic herders do what they move from place to place it is one of the primitive type of subsistence right so for example in india if you want to observe the community is living in mountain regions like gujars bakarwals gaddis bhotias these migrate from different areas from lower foothills plains to the mountains in summer when the snow melt they go to those valleys with their herds cattle to feed them for the season this is also called transhumans community so they are not settlers at one location but they keep fluctuating moving in the seasons so that is part of nomadic herding then number of pastoral nomads have been decreasing across the world that is one important thing to understand and the reasons for that is imposition of political boundaries lots of political changes have happened so one region to the other if there is a boundary in between if you are crossing two states you have to go it's very difficult second is new settlement plans development is coming up so newer areas are taken up for the settlements for developmental activities so that also hinders in this and then third one is the climate change and loss of patch of lands this is the recent phenomena that has started happening in himalayan region as well as different mountain regions of the world facing climate change so if you observe this dark portions on the map here these areas of africa middle east central asia north asia right and another tip here and also some portions in southern parts of africa and madagascar you find the concentration of these nomadic herders then comes commercial level of livestock rearing now this is very important because it's commercial it means people pet animals for the commerce right so it becomes capital intensive right that's really important and it is organized now here is important point to remember that it is practiced on permanent ranches remember nomadic herders are not permanent settlers but this commercial livestock rearers are almost permanent in their setting in their organization so new zealand australia argentina uruguay united states of america the famous countries you see they practice this commercial livestock ranching rearing so you see in the map these maps are very important when you are preparing for civil services examination or for any other examination where you have written answer for even university exams so there you can draw such maps and locate the major areas of the world where these kind of activity is found now comes the primitive subsistence agriculture so now comes the agriculture part in which the primitive times the subsistence was practiced just need based for food right so you observe again on the map the major portions of africa south america then you have indian and southeast asia indo pacific region here on the map so slash and burn technique remember the forest used to be cleared by fire and the soil used to be cultivated again when the fertility was lost people moved to the other location so this is also called slash and burn technique where sticks and hoes are used for cultivation right this method so 3 to 5 years generally is the time to shift to other location then to the other location and many times people also return back farmers shift back also when they see that the older locations have gained fertility right so we call this zooming in northeast zoom cultivation right and also milpa in central america and mexico this area it's called milpa and also ladang in indonesia and malaysia this region 
So that is what you can remember the keywords here of primitive subsistence type. Then comes intensive subsistence. Intensive word itself is intense. Too much of input of labor and also resources but for subsistence only. So you see this area, this kind of agriculture that we see. It's prevalent mostly in South Asia, Southeast Asia where you have monsoon Asia. Right? This you can remember. So what happens here? Most of the products like wheat, soybean, barley, sorghum, all these things are grown in China, Manchuria, North Korea, North Japan and then comes to rice and wheat that is grown Indo-Gangetic plains, millets are grown in drier areas. So you observe this kind of rice cultivation, wheat cultivation, these are part of intensive subsistence where you have too much of input of labor, small land holding size, these become important. Then comes the plantation agriculture. Now as we know that British popularized this kind of agriculture in their colonies, the European colonies basically. So tea, coffee, cocoa, rubber, cotton, oil palm, sugarcane, bananas, pineapples. In large tracts of land, a single crop were grown on hill slopes generally, right? So this was plantation agriculture in commercial type. If you observe here in the Jamaican region, banana and sugarcane, cocoa and coffee in Africa, which is West Africa segment, then tea gardens and coffee gardens you observe in India and also many coconut and rubber plantations in Indo-Pacific, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia. So observe these areas. Now comes to the colonies. So you can remember one line about the colonies. French established cocoa and coffee plantations in West Africa. This is French colony. Then British in Sri Lanka, rubber plantations in Malaysia, sugarcane and banana plantation in West Indies. So huge one, right? And then Dutch monopoly over sugarcane in Indonesia and some coffee fazenda that we say is large plantations in Brazil, right? This was done by Europeans. So this is largely the map of plantation agriculture, which is hugely commercial and colonial in nature, if you observe. Then comes the extensive one from the intensive then we go to the extensive commercial grain cultivation and for this you need what you need lots of capital and a huge tract of land and technology this is mostly in temperate belt if you observe mid latitudes where wheat is the principal crop and if you observe the US area then you have some portions in Europe and Central Asia some portions in different continents if you observe right so Eurasian steppe Canadian and American prairies Pampas in Argentina then you have wells in South Africa Australian downs and Canterbury plains in New Zealand so these are the areas of the world where you have extensive huge tract of land where wheat is the principal crop apart from that corn barley oats rye these are done and this is basically done on mechanization basis tractors thresher for long distances of farming and clearing and again putting the seeds right so from seed to the last step that is you know harvesting is done in mechanization ways so that is where extensive commercial farming is then comes several small 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 concepts that you can remember here is mixed farming where you have equal emphasis on crop as well as animal rearing dairy farming especially we know this in India because it's very famous so what we do fodder feeding and milching so basically milk production comes here, cattle rearing, breeding, healthcare, veterinary services including. Then you have Mediterranean agriculture, the wine production, viticulture, grape cultivation across Mediterranean region that we know. Then we have something called cooperative farming as well, which is also primary activity. So cooperative farming is based on cooperation. The word itself is cooperative and it started from European countries like Denmark, Netherlands, Belgium, Sweden, Italy. And remember Operation Flood in India, that is Amul very famous through cooperative farming and then collective farming is something which is interesting which is the model of collection called the kolkhoz which was introduced erst while soviet union the russian concept the farmers used to pool in so this is kind of a pool in model right like we have car pool in vehicle pool in so we have land pool in and also collective farming on the land right so land livestock and labor that's very important now after this we have some Two, three more important concepts to learn in agriculture, which is market gardening and horticulture. Now, because of rising urbanization, this has also picked up. 
सो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व दिस इज फॉर अर्बन मार्केट्स ओनली फॉर एग्जाम्पल फ्लोरिकल्चर हॉर्टिकल्चर इन स्मॉल एरियाज एंड ग्रोन फॉर द अर्बन यूज राइट सो फार्म आर स्मॉल एंड लोकेटेड वेर देर आर गुड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन लिंक सो योर ट्रांसपोर्ट बिकम्स रियली इंपॉर्टेंट सो मार्केट गार्डनिंग विल बी ओनली बेस्ड ऑन अर्बन सर्विसेस राइट सो बोथ लेबर एंड कैपिटल इंटेंसिव लेज एम्फेसिस ऑन यूज ऑफ इरिगेशन एच वाई वी सीड्स फर्टिलाइजर्स इंसेक्टिसाइड ग्रीन हाउसेज आर्टिफिशियल हीटिंग इन कोल्डर रीजन सो इफ यू मे हैव सीन इन अर्बन एरियाज लॉट ऑफ ग्रीन नर्सरीज एंड सो मेनी ग्रोइंग एरियाज हैव बिन बिल्ट right they do this floriculture and small crops and they generally plant vegetables this is part of market gardening right so this type of agriculture is well developed in densely populated industrial districts generally for example northwestern europe northeastern united states of america and also mediterranean region in india also in urban areas like metropolis metropolitan region like delhi mumbai and several others you can observe this kind of market gardening and horticulture coming up now so now the point to remember here is netherlands specializes in growing flowers right the tulips as you remember and also we have that same in kashmir as well so flown to all major cities of europe from one place then regions for where you have farmers specialize in vegetables only so this is very interesting that only where farmers grow vegetables and they connect with the roads and transport and supply on the daily basis or weekly basis to the urban areas it's also called truck farming why is it called truck farming because the distance of truck farms from the market is governed by the distance that a truck can cover overnight so it means it has to be produced packed and sent overnight that's done through trucks so this is how you can see the truck farming is also done so it's all based on transport connectivity now comes the next activity after agriculture we have mining activity so the methods are open cast mine or shaft mining and this is very common in india so you can also connect to it so what are the factors physical factors like size grade and mode of occurrence of the deposits which kind of mines are there coal mines or other mines and economic factors now very important because it's primary economic activity so the factors for example capital to develop the infrastructure labor transportation cost these matter during mining activities so developed economies are retreating from mining processing and refining stages of production due to high labor cost but because of developing countries have lots of population lots of labor so cheap labor is available so still this is dominant activity right so several countries of africa a few of south america and asia have over 50% of earnings from minerals and mining alone that's very important now the next activity that we know is the forestry and also about it we have learned in biogeography if you have not watched biogeography videos you can go there in the playlist and watch it there we have discussed about forests and other things related to it so there agroforestry dendrology forest ecology forest economics then forest hydrology forest management forest mensuration forest protection then you have silviculture tree breeding urban forestry then we have social forestry farm forestry community forestry eco forestry or environmental forestry that we say energy forestry all these things are very important types of forestries and i have given this here you can pause the video and one lines you can study from here that these are the various types of forestries being done now short rotation forestry analog forestry boreal forestry remember in the boreal areas of the world and rotation recognized forestry is also so taking up in different portions of the world so observe almost 19 to 20 varieties of forestries available across the world and it's essentially a primary activity which is important to learn then comes fishing now coming from india fishing is really important because we are a peninsular country right so the science of producing fish and other aquatic resources for human food and commerce and recreation and ornamental purposes also it is called fishing as we know and fishing is done either commercially for recreational or self consumption purposes now look into the different geographic regions where fishing is prominent one of them is north west pacific region where you have olesian islands central pacific and philippine islands there it's very famous then comes north east atlantic and adjacent waters of arctic very famous areas right so what extending areas from iceland to mediterranean shores this area includes the scandinavian countries norway denmark spain iceland and also uk then you have north west atlantic areas as well so grand bank and george's bank right so where you have gulf stream and labrador current meeting this area is very famous for fishing and several other activities then comes north east pacific 
right extending from alaska to california then southeast pacific where you have peru current remember it's very important we have also talked about it in oceanography as well and then comes the western central pacific where you have philippines and indonesia and southward to australian coast now when we know these areas what you need to do is map these areas on the world map right so what is the threats to fishing activity if you want to observe quickly these are the points to remember climate change runoff shoreline development urban waste plastic waste has been hazardous in stream gravel mining altered flows of river and stream factory farms diseases very common pollution mechanized fishing overfishing all these problems are related to the fishing right and then ghost fishing is one activity we should learn about because ghost fishing is that when there is a derelict fishing gear used it means now the fishing gear which is used for the activity fishing activity is now in bad condition or degraded condition still it is being used by people right that's also called ghost gear because it is not discarded it is again reused but it should be actually discarded so this is kind of a thing where ghost fishing is also done in several areas and remember ghost fishing is not good for marine life right because it is potentially killing the marine life and also changing the habitat and hazard to navigation as well right so ghost fishing concept becomes important also alongside fishing because it was first brought by FAO committee on fisheries in 1985 and still prevalent in many areas because they go against the government norms right so this is why it's called ghost fishing as well so now when we have learned about the different aspects of primary activities in economy various case studies examples and distribution across the world in the sessions to come we'll be talking about the secondary activities in the economy so stay tuned stay safe keep watching keep learning and don't forget to share the videos with others as well